Hey everyone and welcome or welcome back to NP Station. This is the fourth part in the Flappy Bird series and today we are going to be moving our base image as well as the pipes on our screen. Please do follow along with me in typing the code because the output of this game is amazing. Now let's go ahead and start coding. So we're going to go down here. Um, in our previous video, we did the pipe class and as well as the base class. So right after the base class, you should see this draw window function. We're going to start off by changing this function to have the ability to draw pipes and the base. What we're next, uh, what we're going to do now is in this draw window function, we're going to draw all the pipes and the base on our screen. So I'm going to put in a four pipe in pipes here. And what I'll say is pipe.draw and I'll assign it a window. What we're also going to do is here, right before that bird.draw, I'm just going to say base.draw and we'll assign it a window here as well. Okay, now what we are going to do is go to our main function and I'm just going to change the position of the bird to 2 um, 30 instead of 200 because I know I felt like it looked much better when it was like this and then what we'll do just click enter here we're gonna create our base now so base is equal to base and we're gonna set the position to 800 since the base will be at the bottom of our screen now what we will want to do is go to this draw window function and here we're going to add in the same thing as before, the pipes and the base. And since we haven't uh, declared what pipes is here, that's why it's underlining it. So let's do that now. So here we'll say, um, I believe we'll say pipes. And then we're going to make it equal a list called pipe. Actually, this will be in square brackets. So pipe. And then in parentheses, we'll have si 700. So 700 would be the height of the pipes itself. Now let's go ahead and run this and see how it looks. So you can see that our bird was uh, falling. I'm just going to take that out, the bird.move. I'll just comment that out here so it stays in the same place. So you can see here that our base is now added to the bottom of our screen. And, you know, we have our bird staying in that position there so now our base doesn't move yet so let's go ahead and add code in uh, pr our program to do that all we have to do is right here right before that bird dot move that we commented just say base dot move and now let's run this and you can see that our base is moving on our screen. This adds an amazing effect to the bird because it looks like the bird is actually flying. But um, in this program, we're actually going to be programming everything else around the bird to move. The bird will stay in the same X position. But li this looks good. Now let's leave it like that. Let's go back to our code. So that's why this draw window function is so important and it, it makes everything so much more easier to draw on our screen as well as this move function that we've created. It was so easy to make the base move on our screen. So now that we have uh, put in code to move our base, let's go ahead and move all of our pipes. So to do that, right after this while function, I'm going to add in a for loop. So we'll say for pipe in pipes. And then we'll say pipe.move. So I'm just going to go ahead and run this again. And we should see a set of pipes move on our screen. That looks great. And of course, there's only going to be one set of pipes right now since we've only added one in there. But don't worry, we'll fix that. Now what we'll do is, again, we'll stay in this for loop here. And now we're going to check for the collision between the bird and the pipe. So if pipe.collide and then we'll say bird and for now i'm just oops forgot the colon there for now i'm just going to pass it because we're not going to deal with the collisions in this video so we'll get back to that later and then what we want to do is put in another if condition and we're going to check the position of the pipe so we'll say pipe.x um, plus pipe.pipe .pipe underscore top dot get underscore width is less than zero 
So we're checking if the pipe is completely off of the screen. As you can see, you know, when the pipe, it would go um, start on off of the screen, it would get on and then exit off of the left side. So once it's completely off of the screen, we're going to remove that pipe. That's what this line of code is doing. And then I am going to, just before this for loop here, I'm going to add in a list, an empty list, and it's going to be called rem because we're going to use that list here in our if condition and we're going to say rem.append pipe. So that pipe that went off of the screen, we're going to add that pipe into this list. Pretty simple. Okay, now let's go ahead, put in another if condition. We're going to say if not pipe.passed and pipe.x is less than bird.x. We're going to say pipe.passed is equal to true and add underscore pipe is equal to true. Whoops, I found the same line there. Add underscore pipe is equal to true. So what this if condition is doing is we're checking if we have passed the pipe or not. Now we're done with this little um, for loop here. So we're going to exit that. So now that we have put in this if condition for checking if we've passed the pipe, when the bird pass, passes a pipe, what's going to happen? Well, what's going to happen is the score is going to increase by one, right? So right now we don't have any score that is being displayed on our screen. So we're going to do that right now. Let's go ahead and add in code here for um, when we pass a pipe, we're going to add one to the score. So we're going to use that add underscore pipe that uh, variable we used in this if condition. We're gonna say if add underscore pipe, and then we're gonna say score plus equals one. And then what I'm also going to do is go back up in the code here, right after this clock, I'm going to set a score variable and equal to zero. So this is the variable which is gonna keep track of the score, and of course it's going to start off at zero. All right, let's go back to that code. Now here, what we'll do, we'll add in an enter there. All right, so after that score plus one, we are going to say pipes.append, and then in parentheses, pipe, and we're gonna set the height of our pipes to 700. This should be pipes. Make sure there's an S at the end, plural. Okay, so yeah, we're just setting that same X position of 700. Oh yeah, sorry, this actually is not the height of our pipes, it is going to be the X position of the pipes. Okay, so now we're done with that if condition. I'm gonna create a 4R in rem here. So here, we're going to be removing the pipes that went off of the screen. So we say 4R in rem, we're using that list we created, and we're gonna say pipes.remove, R, and then we're going to go back up in our code and right before this rem fun a variable here, I'm gonna say add underscore pipe and I will make it equal to false, just like that. Okay, now let's come back here. And now that we have um, dealt with removing the pipes that went off of the screen, we need to check if the bird has hit the ground. So we'll say if bird dot y, oops, let me spell that right, bird dot y, Right, we're gonna use the uh, Y axis because it has to deal with the bird hitting the ground. So that means the bird goes down the Y axis, right? So we'll say if bird dot Y plus, I already have plus, um, bird dot image dot get underscore height this time is greater than or equal to 800. I'm just going to pass that for now. We're not gonna do that code for now. Um, now let's go ahead we're gonna go back all the way up our screen. Since we're using the bird.image here, uh, let's go all the way up right here, this init function, which is in our bird class. We're going to add in this line of code right there, and we're gonna say self.image is equal to self.images, and in brackets we'll say zero. So what this is doing is we're initializing the image property for the bird object. Okay, so now we can run this code and see how it looks like. We have our base is moving, we have one set of pipes, it's gonna go off the screen and we have another set of pipes that moves off. Then that goes off, we have another. This looks great guys, our code is working. Now if you want these pipes to maybe be a little bit like um, closer together, 
we can go ahead and change that. And then we go back down to where we were. And I believe it is in the append. I have this pipes.append. We can change that to 600. And now let's see how it will look. So the pipe should come on. And just as it is going off, this looks so much better. So we have the distance between each set of pipes is much shorter. I feel like this is a good um, distance. You have like enough time to move your bird to get to the next set of pipes. So I think this looks great. Let's go back to our code. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is go back to that draw window function where we started off um, in this video, and we're gonna add score in the function. And now let's go back all the way up our code here, all the way to the top. And what we'll do is we're gonna create some fonts for drawing these scores, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and put in stat underscore font, all uppercase, is equal to pygame dot font dot sys font, just like that. And then we'll have uh, the font of Comic Sans. And then the size will be 50. Okay. So now that we have created the font, let's go ahead and render these fonts back down here in the code. Let's go to our for loop that we created. Now that I've found that, let's go ahead and render the font to tell us what the score is when we are actually playing the game. So to do that, we'll create a variable called text and we'll set that to be stat underscore font, which you created just now. And we'll say dot render. And now let's put in the text that we want to be displayed on the screen. So that would be score. And we're going to add the not, um, str, the string, right? A score. We're going to put that score variable here. So whatever um, number or however many pipes the bird has passed, that is the score. And that number will be displayed in parentheses here. We'll say one. And then in parentheses, we're going to have the color, which is 255, 255, 255. Just like that. Okay. And then what we'll do is we're going to draw the score on the screen. So to do that, we're going to use that blit function and we'll have text here. We're going to use that text variable we just created. And we'll also have in the parentheses, we're going to make this a little bit more fancier, win.width minus, let me take off that caps lock, minus 10. And then we'll say minus text.get underscore width and then 10. So we're, um, this line of code basically says no matter how big the score gets, it will always be properly displayed on the screen. So you know how um, we'll start off by zero and then zero through nine, those are all single digits. But when we go to double digits, the score gets, the length of it gets longer. So that's why we're going to move the score to the left of the screen a little bit so everything will be displayed properly. Now, um, for this to work, we actually have to add in one more line of code here at the very top where, we're, where we import all the modules. We're gonna say pygame.font.init, just like that. And lastly, we are going to go back all the way down to our draw function here. And after base, we're going to say, or add in um, score in the draw window function. Now let's go ahead and run this code. Look at that guys, we have our score. We only pass the pipe, we add one to the score, pass another, we add two. I'm going to run this until we get to 10 so we can see if the whole score is being displayed. So you can see how that really works. But this looks great, guys. Give yourself a pat on the back because you created this amazing game. It may not look like it, but we basically have coded the entire program or game of Flappy Birds in our next... Oh, and we just hit the double digits. So you can see that the score actually did shift to the left so it can accommodate all the numbers there. But this looks great, guys. In our next video, we're going to be dealing more with the AI of this game. So please do stay tuned on NP Station and give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe to NP Station. But that's all for today, guys. Keep reading, keep coding, and stay safe.